think the credits are rolling. Gotta go. Justice League, The Snyder Cut, just released on HBO Max last week. How does it compare to the Joss Whedon version? Can it save the sinking ship that is the DCEU? And last but not least, is it good? Let's discuss. I, like many people, was disappointed by the Joss Whedon Justice League and greatly anticipated the Snyder Cut release. We essentially bullied Warner Brothers into letting Zack Snyder do this in the same way we did with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. The Snyder Cut was originally going to be an episodic release with four parts. Instead, we got a four hour long movie. No, I did not finish it in a single sitting. I kind of got interrupted. Anyway, at first glance, you might be misled to believe that there are ads with the little white bars in the timeline. Uh, but I assure you that the, there are no ads. It, it was very misleading at first. It does. It looks like there are going to be ads, but really those little white bars just separate the different parts of the movie it was it was broken down into different parts in part one part two etc you know if there were ads though i might not have uh been here to make this video today if you uh catch my drift <laughs> if you have not seen the original do not feel as if you need to in fact i would recommend i would encourage that you do not watch the original when there is a far superior version readily available. It's called The Avengers. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's fantastic. 10 out of 10 would recommend. I'm just kidding. For real, though, the Snyder Cut is much better than the original in many ways. The plot remains mostly the same, but we get to see some much needed character development for some of the new characters. Cyborg specifically gets a lot more attention in this version, and it turns out that he is extremely overpowered. Technology bends to his will. He can destabilize the global economy with just a thought. What does he do with this unlimited power? He gives a poor struggling single mother $100,000. That's great, man. He could have ended poverty, world hunger, anything for the good of mankind. But no, instead he just helped one person. Well, what a nice guy. We should all collectively hate this man for having unlimited power, but only using it to help those he deems worthy. Now let's move on to The Flash. Barry Allen is a spunky young lad who is struggling financially, looking for another part-time job to help him pay for his criminal justice degree. If only there were a another character that could help him financially. Hmm... Nope, can't seem to think of one. He's also the fastest man alive, which is a surprise to literally no one. Super Speed has many potential uses, and his only real weakness is that he eats a lot, although he does have kind of a secondary weakness where he trips sometimes. Um, anyway, this movie does not provide any explanation as to how he got his powers. We only know that he hasn't been doing this for very long. He's very new at the superhero game and that the very rich Bruce Wayne has taken him under his wing as a mentor figure in the same way that Iron Man mentors Spider-Man. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. See, see, see what they did here is, right, they're, they're copying Marvel. 
Well, that's nothing new. They've been copying Marvel for years. The, the entire DCEU is just an attempt at recreating the success of the MCU. The problem here is that Barry Allen is not Peter Parker. Not even close. Everyone always says that there is a wealth of content that they could pull from the comics for the movies, and it is especially true for The Flash. Everyone knows Spider-Man's origin story in the same way that everyone knows Batman's origin story. We've been told their origin stories, we've experienced it many times, right? But not everyone knows The Flash's origin story. So retell it. The other characters, I feel, receive just the right amount of attention. But that doesn't mean I'm done with the criticism just yet. And to be clear, these criticisms don't just apply to the Snyder Cut, but also the original as well. I'm going to ignore the four-hour length of the Snyder Cut here because I felt like the pacing was just about right, and I didn't really see the overall length of the film as a major issue. The Flash here is mishandled as a character just in general. With him being so young and Batman being so old, it's hard to believe that they planned ahead for the expansion of this universe. Additionally, the Flash can not only move fast, he can perceive fast. So in theory, he shouldn't ever really get tripped up by anything, especially not by any blast from a cannon. He would see it coming in slow motion a mile away and just dodge it. Anyway, Alex brought up this point here, and I feel like I should address it as well. He, he said that Superman was way too overpowered in this movie. And while I personally believe that Superman is the definition of overpowered, with him, you know, constantly being compared to Goku, of all characters, right? I guess there could be an argument made here for... Superman being overpowered in this movie, but personally, I don't really see it. A throwaway character gets a cameo in this movie. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil who it is. I'm not going to tell you guys who it is. But there is a throwaway character that gets a cameo in this movie. It's another superhero, and this character is also quite powerful. Very powerful character. And he, or she, sorry... Might have spoiled it a bit there. Definitely, 100% should have helped fight in this final battle. Like, it's almost unrealistic that, th that they didn't go and join the final battle for this big world-ending fight. Justice League, the Snyder Cut, redeems the DCEU and makes up for the egregious malfeasance that Joss Whedon performed on the original Justice League. What it does not do is rewrite the DCEU as a whole, and I fear that there may not be a future for the DCEU unless some serious changes take place. I believe that DC has what it takes to compete with Marvel without directly copying them. Unfortunately, the current DCEU doesn't have the ability to stand on its own two feet. As far as this movie is concerned, however, we rate this movie a 6 out of 10. If you've got a movie you want us to review, let us know. Leave a comment, reach out to us through social media, and if you're feeling especially generous, check us out on Patreon where you can guarantee that we will review your movie. All the links can be found in the link tree in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we will see you the next time the credits roll.